and you're pretty well good proof that uh, you never stop learning, right? Well, there's a lot of guys around like that. A lot of, you know, uh, Gary White, guitar player on the Wednesday Night Jazz Band, like, he's phenomenal. Yeah. You know, and he's still looking up stuff. He's still learning stuff. And, like, and he's a few years older than I have. You know? Oh, no, again. Yeah. And he, and Who's the oldest active guy right now? That's playing at like regular gigs. I'd say probably Gary. Oh yeah. Yeah, maybe Rod Wicket is uh, might be older than Gary. I I, I really don't know, but oh, the couple. Anybody over sixty that's still playing seriously and you know not just honking around. Yeah. Uh, you know, good Give it way to, to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah way yeah. to go. You know, like it's hard. It's hard to do, and like it's hard to get up off the couch when you're watching a baseball game and it's time to go to the gig. But as soon as you get there, boom. Yeah. Glad I did this again, you know. Right on. Right. I'm really tired this morning after I, you know, get to bed at three. I'm really glad I did it, you know. Like, oh, cool, cool. I saw you recently at a uh, like a, someone's birthday party where you're playing out of a garage, right? Yeah. Well, we do lots of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah why not? Yeah. Yeah. yeah for that's, sure. That's people. That's like, why we started. You know, that's the <laughs> way you started, and that's where you're uh, yeah, where you're like, continuing to go. I'd much rather play a, a, something like that than a. A bar where nobody's as much interested in what you're doing. Oh, you know? right, yeah. You know, yeah. we don't get that very often, but it happens. We've shown up at a couple of gigs where it's just, oh, oh, wrong place, wrong band, wrong time. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, it, how do you handle that when that happens? Just do your thing. Yeah, just, do your thing. Smile your way through it. In fact, try some stuff that you know. You try stuff that maybe will get their attention. And we've have gotten a lot better at that with the band. We've okay, let's. We're still a blues band, but we'll do some credence, and but we'll do it the swampy way, not hey. not the uh, whatever you call it, just straight up rock and roll. We'll add a little bit of spunk and funk to it, hey. and, and we got the guys there. The you have the, the capacity and the talent. Yeah, yes. the rhythm armada there, uh, Rob and Ryan. Like, what do you want? Okay, here we go, <laughs> and that's that's about all there is to it with those guys. You know. So, who uh, some of your favorite local bands? Let's talk some people. Up. Uh, well, I like the jazz band on Wednesday night. Like that's some nights it's just spectacular. And I fill in when Gary, the guitar player, is gone. So I go a lot just to see the material and whatnot. But every time, uh, every night, like, and they're almost every Wednesday. And every time there's something that I go home and what is that? You know? Oh yeah. Every time, like there's this. It's always good. Like right. some nights are better than others, but it's always good. And uh, anybody you'd really like to play with? Uh, off the top of my head, no, it's always I'd like to do another gig with Brian Downey. Like, I jammed with him a few years ago. That's the original drummer who went to Detroit, with, yeah, because he was like he was he's, he's a bit older than I, he's probably 76, 77, but he still plays hockey and he, he's still a great drummer and he's tough, like, in every which way. You know, like he, he's just, this is the way he runs it. And it was great, great training, but he was like a mentor, I guess. I mean, I, Cause I was just a greenhorn from North Bay. Right. I knew nothing and I didn't want to be a star or anything. I wanted to learn how to play guitar. You know, yeah. that was my purpose. And I wanted to be a, like, I thought the best gig in the world. And I saw James Brown, there was something called the Tammy show in 62 or 63. And it was this Jan and Dean were the MCs, but they had the Rolling Stones and Beach Boys. And James Brown was on there. And I thought his guitar player was probably the coolest man in the world. All right. I, <laughs> I, I want that gig, you know? And yeah. that Interesting was, times. You had fun. You had a full-time yeah. job with the post office. Uh, you, yeah, know, you were able yeah. to raise family, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, it all kind of, I don't know, it all just happened. There was Best no of all worlds, really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'd say. And, uh, you know, I can say it now because it's much later, but I got the... I applied for the job at the post office and then nothing happened. And then I played hockey against them. I was a goalie and played in the sportsman's league and I shut them out. Yeah. And they, there's a big, uh, post <laughs> office hockey tournament across Canada, hockey tournament at every May. And so uh, you want a job? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Romeo Messier. You know? Well, that's how they get hired by the cops and the firefighters sure. around here too. You better be playing hockey and be on your team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they look for athletes because they figure you got a good attitude and you're healthy. You know, yeah. like, that's, that's all. Anyway, I, I ended up just, just like a six month contract that one thing leads to another and 
30 years later I retired. <laughs> See you later. Thank you. Well, that was good though. You know. Yeah, well, there's no plan or nothing. It just happened, you know. And yeah. Perfect. That's the way, you know. Were you a good goalie? I got uh, scouted. Oh, yeah? Back in, well, I guess be about three. Uh, I quit hockey when I was 15 because I had a run in with the coach. But, you uh, and every other 15 year old? Yeah. yeah, pretty well. Yeah, especially when you're a goalie. But back then, the, the only one goalie, you know, dressed, no mask or nothing. You just. Uh, you played with no mask? Oh, yeah. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see this, see that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was, I thought uh, that was just natural handsomeness. <laughs> yeah, that, that ruggedness. Yeah, 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 there you go. But uh, yeah, like at that time, uh, Ab DeMarco Jr. got and Sheldon Kennegeezer and uh, Johnny Barber, Bill Barber's older brother. Oh, yeah. And uh, Gord Kennegeezer. And there's about half a dozen of us. All got, we're going to go to St. Mike's. Right. And so, needless to say, when I quit hockey, my dad wasn't exactly pleased. <laughs> well, no doubt. <laughs> you know, not when you had an uh, opportunity, almost. Right? Well, yeah, it was there. It was all he already signed some papers. Apparently. So, what did, so what were you pissed off at the coach for? Well, I was 15 years old. Yeah. And I was practicing with the Trappers at Junior A team. Yeah. And. What year? What year is it? Uh, 62, somewhere in, around there. Yeah, it would have been 61, 62, 63. I, I was practicing with the Trappers, but I was playing with the juvenile team, mm -hmm. which is 17 and 18-year-olds, yep. just before you go into junior hockey. And uh, I show up on a Saturday night to play a game, and the coach says, you weren't at practice yesterday, so you're not playing. I said, I practice with the Trappers. I don't care. You're not playing. <laughs> it was a, well, I've been thinking about it for a long time. And then it's, he said, you can't quit. Come back here. Cause, uh, who was the coach? Uh, Larry Lewis was the guy's name. Yeah. Yeah. And, his, and he, he was, uh, I guess, I don't know. I, I can't say other, I, I can't remember all the details of it, but I, he just I, pissed you off. Yeah. Yeah. I had yeah. enough. And, uh, and I just remember walking out of the arena. And I just felt really good. <laughs> yeah, this, that's over with because there's even at that point back then at that age there's a lot of politics going on. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, and Pete Palangio had the team at that time. He was really good to me. He bought me a set of brown pads and gloves and like top of the line stuff. You know, and then I quit and I felt bad about that, but that's about it. Yeah, no, I know. Did just, you regret quitting at any point? Not really, no. And then when I came back to town quite a few years later, I. Went and bought a pair of pads and scrounged up gloves and stuff and uh, played in the Sportsman's League for five, six years and then played out and then stopped for a few years and played out in Asterville in the Happy League, they call it. <laughs> yeah, the Happy League. And it was great as long as there was no referees. As soon as the referees came on, we'd have tournaments on the weekends. And as soon as there was referees, everybody's all cranky and fighting. Other than that, the the league games were great, you know. Oh, no kidding. Everybody self police, you know. Somebody's getting a little upset, and those guys just come on, settle down, have go yeah. into the restroom, have a beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And when you settle down, and it was it was great, and it was good hockey, because by that time I was probably close to fifty, and I hadn't played for three, four years, and uh, I got out there, and here's Chevy, and these guys are thirty five, just whipping around like I. Whoa! It took a couple games to get used to the speed, because there's a lot of young guys. Yeah. But it was great. It was great hockey, and uh, yeah, it was just fun. That's cool. It's more that's fun. what it should be. Yeah, yeah. Well, just like you're playing, right? Yeah, it's, it's uh, funny. I always find things that are fun. They're not very lucrative, but they're fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, join yeah. the join the club. Yeah, <laughs> well, all no, the I'm hobbies not. they don't pay. <laughs> yeah, but they, but it keeps you happy and it keeps us young. You know, like, yeah. I think. Yeah, so oh, it does. You got to you got to do what you want to do. If you're not doing that, what the hell are you doing? You know? Yeah, yeah, you're doing you're, somebody else's shit. Yeah, that's right. You're doing it for to impress somebody or to, because they need it. You know, you do that enough when you're working a day job. That's enough. And I always enjoyed the day job. I enjoyed walking around till it. You know, after thirty years, your back starts to yell at you, but I still enjoyed it. You know, it's a good job. And well, you got to meet a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of dogs too. <laughs> yeah, Were you ever bit? Oh yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. One time. Where'd you get bit? Well, I just got on the arm a couple of times with a uh, winter coat, but this one time, was, 
we go up to a house, you know, summertime, so I had shorts on. Uh, we go up to the house, and, I, and there was a, a dog in the backyard. He was always, there was a big shepherd, and the gate was always closed. And this one day, and I didn't, because I'd go and do the thing that I go around and give the dog a, a cookie. Yeah. You know, and he was pretty vicious, but he'd just leave me alone after. And I go around, and the gate's open. And I guess the, I found out later the kid was cutting the grass, and he forgot the gate open. And I'm walking down the driveway, and all of a sudden, yes, right on the right cheek of my arse. Oh. You know? oh, he got me. He tore out the back of the, the shorts and my underwear. He just tore it. So I'm walking down Ann Street <laughs> with my ass sticking <laughs> out. There's a little store there at the time I went in called work. I, said, I had to go for a tetanus shot. Yeah. But that was the only time, like other times, it's just little nips and... And one time, a little ankle biter dog. Yeah, <laughs> this little white dog comes out. A little out punt. And a little punt. Well, that's what happened. I, <laughs> he, he, he was nibbling away on my ankles. I just had enough, and I gave him a shot. And he runs back. <laughs> He's got blood coming down his nose. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't mean to hurt him. I just wanted to go away. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all. Oh, no, that's always. all part of the the job. You know, like I always found the. The harder I work, the luckier I get, you know? Yeah. Like, and that's just the way it works. You don't have to have a major plan. Just keep plugging away at stuff and something always happens. Yeah. As long yeah. as you're plugging away and working hard, yeah. Yeah. Think like, things come. Yeah. Then that's about all there is to it, you know, I think. Other than that, uh, have fun. You know? <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. It's a good interview. Appreciate your time. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That was